Purchase new wiper blades from O'Reilly Auto Parts today and we'll install them for free. See better and drive safer with O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hey, all. Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. And I thank you so much for listening today. Uh, If you are looking for a free 31-page PDF, definitely go check out reallifepharmacology.com. It's a top 200 study guide where I lay out the most uh, important and, and relevant clinical pearls as well as those things that uh, come up on pharmacology exams on a regular basis there. So definitely go uh, take advantage of that uh, free resource simply for subscribing. We'll send you updates as to uh, when we've got new podcasts available and uh, new content as well. All right, so the drug of the day today is uh, scopolamine and specifically uh, transdermal scopolamine. Now this is uh, classified as an anticholinergic medication and its primary use is the uh, prevention of nausea and vomiting and that could be due to a couple of reasons. Uh, Most common reason uh, I've seen this medication used in clinical practice is for motion sickness uh, but it can also uh, be used for nausea and vomiting associated with Uh, anesthesia or or general surgery. Now, how does this uh, medication work? Uh, Again, being an an anticholinergic medication, it's going to block muscarinic receptors, uh, possibly also has some antihistamine type activity, and uh, it's going to block the action of uh, acetylcholine, which can ultimately... uh, cause some drying up of secretions, uh, slow down the gut, and uh, potentially provide some relief for nausea and vomiting, which is what we're going to primarily use this medication for. Adverse effect profile. So let's talk about this a little bit, uh, because this gives me the perfect example of uh, explaining the prescribing cascade. So adverse effects, knowing that it's an anticholinergic medication, what you're going to see is dry mouth, uh, dry eyes, potentially constipation, and urinary retention. Uh, In addition, there might be some sedation, uh, confusion, fall risk. Uh, That's more so probably uh, in our geriatric population. So let's talk uh, about that prescribing cascade. So when I know that a patient is on uh, an anticholinergic medication, I look out for medications that can manage some of the adverse effects. So for instance, dry mouth. Uh, If I see a a patient uh, taking a saliva substitute or potentially a drug like pilocarpine, those are instances where I am looking out for anticholinergic medications like scopolamine and looking to see if a patient is taking some of them. Uh, Dry eyes, for example, you may see artificial tears or a medication like Restasis being used. Urinary retention, you might see BPH type medications like tamsulosin or maybe a finasteride in, in males. Uh, and then constipation, of course. So if you see, you know, Miralax or Senna or some of those medications being utilized, keep an eye out for anticholinergic medications like uh, scopolamine being on board. I also wanted to mention that uh, transdermal scopolamine is a part of the Beers criteria as a uh, potentially inappropriate medication 
to be used in the elderly. So definitely, uh, in the, the majority of situations, uh, we want to avoid this medication in our geriatric patients. All right, so pharmacokinetics. I think uh, it's important to recognize uh, when we use transdermal uh, administration of medications, this can lead to a much, much slower onset of action than if we were to, you know, take it orally or by injection, of course. So because of that, because we're likely to anticipate a slower onset of action, this means that as needed use of transdermal scopolamine is probably not going to be uh, the greatest thing ever, okay? So if a patient's experiencing nausea and vomiting right now due to motion sickness, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to give transdermal scopolamine to alleviate those acute symptoms. Now why is that? It takes a, a bit of time for that drug to uh, cross the skin tissue and get into systemic circulation. So for transdermal scopolamine, uh, it's recommended to give it at least uh, four hours before uh, exposure or before anticipated um, exposure to a situation that's going to lead to nausea and vomiting. So such as motion sickness and or uh, you know general anesthesia or surgery, which I mentioned before there. So the onset of action is, is going to be in the range of uh, probably six to eight hours. So we want to make sure we get that patch on uh, in time prior to the exposure of the event. So getting that patch um, placed, you know, four to six hours probably prior uh, to the uh, exposure there. All right, so that's going to wrap up our first section. We'll uh, take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll finish up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like NAPLEX, BCPS, ambulatory care, medication therapy management, or geriatrics, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store. Uh, we've got a growing list of uh, testimonials and customers, and we've been uh, putting together uh, study materials for years now at this point, and I think doing a, a good job of preparing candidates uh, to actually pass their exam. So go check that out. In addition, if you're a nurse, uh, physician, any other healthcare professional, uh, definitely go check out our list of Amazon books, uh, Audible books, and you can find all those links at uh, meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, so let's finish up drug interactions. But I did want to mention uh, with drug interactions, um, we've got that uh, Audible book that you can get for absolutely free if you've never tried Audible. So go check that out. That link is at meded101.com slash store. Um, and again, if you've never had an Audible book, um, we've got a link to uh, get your first one for free. And I've got a 10-hour book uh, on drug interactions, talking about clinical significance and a lot of common things that you see in, in clinical practice. So go go check that out. On transdermal scopolamine, thinking about drug interactions, um, really, uh, we, we don't have any issues with absorption and things like that through the gut. So that's a nice thing that we don't have to worry about uh, with a uh, transdermal type medication. Uh, however, it certainly is a systemic medication, so it gets into the bloodstream, of course. And there's really two major interactions I think about that are, are common. So the first one is really anticholinergic load, uh, sometimes called anticholinergic burden. So if you've got a patient on other anticholinergics, uh, whether that be you know, older antihistamines, uh, tricyclic antidepressants, those can have additive effects to transdermal scopolamine. So those adverse effects uh, that I, I mentioned previously might be more likely to occur or have a higher risk or stronger incidence. 
So your dry mouth, your dry eyes, your constipations, uh, your urinary retention, confusion, those can all impact um, or have additive effects due to some of those medications that I mentioned. Then, of course, we have CNS depressants. That's an important thing to think about. Uh, so whether it's alcohol, opioids, benzodiazepines, the additive sedative effect can be really troublesome for some patients. And again, probably more so in geriatric patients, but it's definitely something we need to look out for there. And then, of course, thinking about um, opposition type effects. So I mentioned urinary retention as an adverse effect. So it could potentially oppose the benefit of a drug like finasteride or a drug like tamsulosin that's commonly used uh, to manage symptoms of, of BPH. Same thing with worsening confusion in a dementia patient. It could potentially oppose the beneficial effects of a drug like dinepazil, an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up uh, some of the more common drug interactions with transdermal scopolamine. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast today, found it helpful, uh, definitely leave a rating review on iTunes. Uh, share us with a, a classmate, a colleague, um, anyone uh, in the healthcare field that may benefit from learning more about medication management and, of course, uh, medication safety. Sign up at reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Nice little study guide there. And I am going to sign off for today. And you can track me down uh, on LinkedIn, at Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCGP, BCPS, or at mededucation101 at gmail.com. So signing off for today. Thank you so much for listening. Take care, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo, and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.